Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going deep into Texas commercial real estate today. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, specifically investment opportunities. All right. We've got this uh, real estate listing email okay. from Eureka Business Group dated November 30th, 2024. So pretty recent. Yeah, basically a sneak peek at what investors are checking out right now. I like it. Yeah, so um, what's cool is this isn't just like a random list of properties, you know. Right. Eureka Business Group, they're the real deal. Yeah, they are. They help people buy, sell, manage, you know, even reposition commercial real estate. Interesting. So they know their stuff, been around since 2008. Wow. Yeah, so they've seen it all. These listings give us a peek into how they're thinking about the market right now. Makes sense. Now the email starts with uh, kind of like a sense of urgency. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like almost the end of the year, right? Right. They point out it's tough to close a property before year end unless you're paying cash. Well, yeah, all that paperwork and stuff. Exactly. Why the rush, though, you think? Hmm. Well, closing a real estate deal, especially a commercial one, Yeah. it's complicated. Financing inspections, due diligence. Right, right. It's a lot to squeeze in before the holidays hit. For sure, for sure. Especially for buyers who need loans. Yeah. True. Makes you wonder if sellers might be a little more motivated this time of year, too. Mm, yeah, maybe willing to make a deal. Yeah, for those ready to move fast. Interesting. Okay. They also mention a free BOV service. A what? BOV for commercial property owners. Okay. Now, BOV, that's broker's opinion of value. Right. But just for folks who might not know, what's the big deal with that? So it's like getting a professional to tell you what your property's worth oh. without actually having to put it up for sale. Makes sense. It can be handy for things like, uh, you know, tax planning. Oh, right. Refinancing or just seeing where you stand in the market. Smart. Yeah, a good move for any owner, really. Whether they're selling right away or not. Exactly. Okay, cool. <laughs> let's jump into the properties themselves. All right, let's do it. First up, four-unit multifamily property. Okay. Eureka calls it a bite-size investment. Bite size. Yeah. I'm guessing that means good for newer investors. Probably. Yeah. Bite size could mean the price is lower. Right. And it's uh, less to manage, you know. Yeah. Four units. That's not a huge building. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Less daunting for someone just starting out. They also say it's in a growing market. Okay. And well-maintained. So less risk up front, maybe. Could be steady rental income, too. Sounds promising. Next, they have a medical office space. Right. Roughly 3,200 square feet not too big and it's got that nnn designation and in triple net lease right oh yeah where the tenant handles most of the expenses exactly property taxes insurance uh, maintenance very hands-off for the landlord definitely this one's in an affluent submarket too okay nice with two tenants now they call them strong tenants but what does that actually mean strong tenants huh <laughs> well i'd assume good credit makes sense paying rent on time consistently maybe even businesses that are you know doing well Right. Got to be in a stable industry. Exactly. That'd make it much more attractive for investors. For sure. Investors want to see stability, reliability. Especially with that triple net lease. Yeah. Where the tenant's covering the costs, basically. Exactly right. All right. Moving on. They've got a 28-unit multifamily property. Okay. Bigger than the last one. Yeah. Much bigger. Um, they mentioned the location is great. Always good. And uh, recent capital expenditures. So they've been keeping it updated. Nice. So it's not a fixer-upper. Right. But here's the thing. They say the rents are below market value. Hmm. Below market value. What do you think that means? Could be a red flag, right? Maybe some issue with the property. Yeah, like what? I don't know. Something that's keeping rents down. Could be bad. Or it could be a great opportunity. Oh, how so? Well, if it's something you can fix. Like where? Outdated amenities. Bad management. You could raise those rents. Oh, I see. Increase the value. Make a nice profit. Smart. Okay, so it's all about figuring out the why. Exactly. The numbers don't tell the whole story. Okay, next up, eight-unit multifamily in Grapevine, Texas. Grapevine. Nice. They mention it's an affluent town, and this property could qualify for conventional loans. Why is that a big deal? Conventional loans usually have better terms. Oh, okay. Lower interest rates. So it's easier to finance. More buyers could qualify. Makes it more appealing. Exactly. Could be a quicker sale. Plus, Grapevine being affluent. Right. Higher rents, maybe. Property values going up. Location, location, location. Yeah. Okay, this next one's interesting. It's a vet clinic. A vet clinic? Yeah, almost 18,000 square feet. They're pretty excited about this one. Absolute NNN structure. Okay, so triple net again. Over 20 years of tenancy. Wow, that's a long time. Annual CPI increases too. Keeping up with inflation. What makes this type of property so attractive? Well, for one, stability. Long-term income. 
Hmm. Vet clinic, been there forever. Yeah. Hopefully they're doing good business. Right. Steady cash flow. And with yeah. that NNN structure, you don't have to do much. Hands-off investment. Exactly. Plus, those CPI increases protect you if costs go up. Sounds pretty good. Any downsides to consider? Well, there's always some risk. A long lease is great, but what if the vet clinic moves out? Oh, that's true. You're stuck with that lease. Mm -hmm. And those CPI increases, they might not cover everything. So you got to look closely at the lease terms. And make sure the business is healthy. That's where due diligence comes in. Exactly. You got to investigate everything. But like what specifically, what should someone be looking at when they're evaluating a property like this? So due diligence is basically a deep dive. You look at the financials, the legal stuff. Okay. You review the lease, check for any problems with the building. Make sure it's not falling apart. Right. And uh, look at the tenant's finances. Make sure they can actually pay the rent. Exactly. Oh. And you check for any environmental or legal issues. Wow. It's a lot to think about. It is. It's about making sure there are no surprises. All right. Makes sense. Now let's look at this single tenant building right on I-35. I-35. Lots of traffic. 3,043 square feet. Built in 2011, so relatively new. Location is great for visibility. Definitely. Plus, it's another absolute NNN lease. Passive income again. And being built in 2011 means maybe not a lot of repairs needed. Potentially lower operating costs, yeah. Okay. On to the bigger investments now. They have a retail center. Okay, how big? 21,975 square feet. It's 100% occupied. Wow, fully leased. High traffic area. And get this, a 7% cap rate. 7%? That's pretty good. Now, for folks who aren't real estate experts, can you explain cap rate? So cap rate or capitalization rate tells you how much you can expect to earn. Like return on your investment. Exactly. Based on the income the property brings in. Okay. 7% it's considered pretty strong, good potential return, and it's fully occupied, like you said. So lots of rent coming in. Yeah. High demand for retail space in that area. But what about all the online shopping these days? Ah, uh, good point. E-commerce is changing things. Are there risks with investing in retail? Definitely. You got to look beyond just the occupancy. Okay. What else matters? The lease terms. Who are the tenants? Are they strong businesses? National chains? So not just some local store that might go out of business. Right, exactly. Is the center busy? Are people shopping there? Or is everyone just buying online? You got it. It's oh. about the long-term viability of those businesses. Gotcha. Last one's a big one. Okay, lay it on me. Office building. 67,202 square feet. Wow, that's huge. Actually, it's three buildings. Strong tenants with long leases. 7.75% cap rate. Impressive but is bigger always better? Good question. What do you think? Well, a bigger property means potentially more income, right? but also more risk. What if a big tenant leaves? Oh, yeah, that would be a big hit. And the office market isn't what it used to be. Because of remote work? Exactly. People working from home. Even with those long leases, who knows what the future holds? So size isn't everything. You got to consider the market, the tenants, the potential for change. This email has given us a lot to think about. It really has. It's a fascinating glimpse into Texas real estate. What's happening right now? But it's just a starting point, right? Oh, definitely research is key. Due diligence and working with experts. Couldn't agree more. So before we move on, yeah, what are some key questions investors should be asking themselves? You know, when looking at opportunities like these. Oh, that's a good question. What do you think? First off, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. What kind of risk are you comfortable with? Are you looking for passive income or do you want to be more hands-on? Exactly. And do you want steady returns or are you okay with more risk for potentially higher profit? Makes sense. Figure out what you want first. Right. Then you can focus on the right types of properties and markets. Okay. So find the right fit for you. Okay. We've covered a lot. What are your final thoughts on the Texas market based on this email? Well, it seems like a dynamic market. Lots of different opportunities. We mm -hmm. saw everything from small multifamily to big office buildings. Yeah. And they're pushing to close deals now. So Yeah, end of the year. Shows there's still interest from investors, potential for growth. That's good. But we also talked about some challenges, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like with retail and office space, things are changing. Investors have to adapt. Exactly. Every investment has risks. And Texas is no different. So don't just jump in without thinking. Right. Research is crucial. Know the risks and be realistic. Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll look at the bigger picture. What does all this tell us about the US economy? All right, so we're back and uh, ready to kind of zoom out a little bit. Okay. You know, from those specific properties in Texas, 
to the U.S. economy as a whole. The bigger picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can we learn anything about the national economy yeah. from this Texas real estate email? Hmm. It's an interesting question for sure. Right. I mean, real estate, especially commercial real estate. Yeah. It's often seen as like a leading indicator. Of how the economy is doing. Exactly. So we're seeing all these properties being marketed in Texas even as the year ends. Right. Does that mean things are looking good for the U.S. economy? It could. I mean, think about it. Investors are still interested. Even with inflation and talk of a recession. Yeah. It might show some resilience in the economy. Okay. They're putting their money into real estate. So they must see potential for growth. Right. They're betting on the future. That's good. But we talked about some challenges too, right? Of course, no market's perfect. Like with retail and office space. Yeah, those are definitely shifting. E-commerce, remote work. Are those national trends too? Absolutely. It's happening everywhere. So the old way of doing things, uh, brick and mortar retail, big office buildings. It's being disrupted. Investors need to adapt. For sure. So knowing that, are there any sectors that look particularly strong? Yeah, like where are investors putting their money now? Well, one area that's hot is industrial real estate. Industrial? Yeah, I think warehouses, distribution centers. Oh, right, for e-commerce. Exactly. Online shopping keeps growing, so they need those spaces. Makes sense. More online orders means more stuff to store and ship. Right, it's all connected. What else? Healthcare real estate is also pretty solid. Really? Yeah, the population's aging people need more medical care. So there's always going to be demand. Pretty much medical office buildings, mm -hmm. senior living facilities, all doing well. Those are seen as safe investments, it, right? Relatively. Yeah. yeah, even if the economy takes a dip, people still need health care. True. So investors like that stability. They want those steady returns. Now remember, real estate is local. Right, even within a sector like industrial. What works in one city? might not work in another. So go do your research. Absolutely. Look at the local market, the demographics, everything. So what's the big takeaway then? What does all this tell us about the U.S. economy? Well, it's a mixed bag, right? There's activity in Texas. Those properties are moving. Some optimism. Yeah. But those shifts in retail and office space, they show things are changing. Got to be ready to adapt. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess the U.S. economy, it's in transition. Like the real estate market, there are challenges and there are opportunities. Right. you got to stay informed, yeah. be strategic, and remember, things are always changing. And don't forget to work with the experts. Oh, absolutely. Find people who know the market. They can guide you, help you make smart decisions. Could agree more. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive. We've learned a lot about commercial real estate and what it tells us about the U.S. economy. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, happy investing.